Very commonly in my comments, I get something like this, where someone is complaining, oh, you don't understand rural towns, or you don't care about people in rural places because you live in a city. So I'm tired of these brainless comments because the actual truth is far from what these people think. Some of my favorite places in the world are in rural or ex-urban communities, and what frustrates me is that I know that many of these places can be designed in such a better way, and just like the people that live in a city, they also deserve decent public transit too. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about rural Pennsylvania, so strap in, because we're going to Appalachia. <laughs> Oftentimes when we think of modern exurbs, images like this resonate hard with people. This is Breezewood, Pennsylvania, and a few years ago it became a meme. There are also many funny edits that can be found floating around on the internet of this image too. This image became popular for multiple reasons, but in the end, the reason why it spread as much as it did is because there are large portions of North America that look like this. And if you live here in North America, I'm sure that you can picture a place nearby that looks oddly familiar to Breezewood, Pennsylvania. Now, just like always when Breezewood is discussed, Breezewood Legionnaires will come out to defend the sacred holy land that is an exit off of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, proclaiming, But this is just a rest stop. You cannot use this as an example. In one way, they are right, but in every other aspect, this does look like a large portion of rural and suburban America. But let's leave Breezewood and check out Wall and Paulpack Township. Walton Paulpack Township is named for the large man-made lake that resides next to it. The lake is used for hydropower and is very unique in many ways, but maybe that's the topic for a future video. Walton Paulpack Township looks like Breezewood with wide roads straddled with strip malls and big box stores with large setbacks. It looks like many rural places in America, but weirdly right down the road is an example of a wildly better form of rural Americana. Right down the road from Wall and Paul Pack is a small town called Holly. Holly, Pennsylvania was a town founded in 1827, mainly because of the Delaware and Hudson Canal was finished. Other than shipping coal and goods on the canal, Holly also had a silk mill, which still exists today. But instead of being a silk mill, it's now part community college, part brewery, and part hotel. What Holly excels at, though, is what every American town built before 1950 is good at, which is having a great downtown that is walkable and is not car-centric at all. Again, let me remind you, this is a rural town. Now, if you're going to be a pedantic person in the comments, you're going to be like, but Holly is in the northeast between Scranton and NYC. That's not really rural. Holly is rural, but if you don't believe that it's a rural town, here's Marion, Kansas, a walkable farm town in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, Holly barely has 1,200 people living here, but the town has a lot of amenities that a non-walkable town might not have at all. It has its own theater for musical performances. It has affordable housing with apartment buildings. It has elderly apartments. It has multiple bars to walk to. It has sports fields, and most importantly, it still has a train station. Nowadays, the train station is only used for the heritage line and rail biking, but back in the day, it was served by the Erie Railroad and later the Erie Lackawanna until the 60s. It's possible that a state-funded passenger railroad connection could be built again to connect with Port Jervis, or maybe you could just go and do the more lame but easy thing of having a bus run between these places. Either way, rural places like Holly that are built for walkability deserve transit just as much as people in cities, but obviously that means within the population to support it. But speaking of things to do in Holly, not only does it have more amenities than a newer rural town, but it's also better at sustaining itself financially. Let's compare a grocery store that's down the road in Wallen Paul Pack Township. This IGA is on a plot of land that is 4.2 acres, and it's assessed at $1.6 million. This means that the value of the land is $380,000 per acre. Now let's compare that to a block of buildings in downtown Holly. This block between Keystone Street and Church Street is 1.8 acres in total, and it has an assessed value of $3.6 million. 
This brings the land value to $2 million per acre. The block in Holly is worth six times more than the store, so at minimum, there is six times the tax revenue that is generated from this block, while at the same time, the block has less than half of the same road infrastructure needed to support it with state funds. Holly is financially sustainable, and the sprawling Wall and Paulpack Township is not. If you want a longer video on the subject of financially sustainable infrastructure, Not Just Bikes has a fantastic video on it here. It's just frustrating that we continue to build our ex-urban and rural places like Breezewood or Wall and Paulpack Township. Instead of building a town to visit with a cute downtown, they are just places to drive through that happen to have businesses scattered on the side of the road. These places are ugly and they're not memorable and they're not sustainable financially or environmentally. If we care about the beautiful lands that these rural places and people live in, we should be building more places like Holly, where everyone has their own house in a dense neighborhood, but there's a walkable downtown and options to live in an apartment if you need to. Not everyone can have a place in the middle of the wilderness, because once everyone lives out in the wilderness, it's not the wilderness anymore. It's just a suburban development that's hard to get to. Also, if we cared about drunk driving statistics for rural communities, we'd be focusing more on how and where people live around their favorite places to go to. It's a lot more fun to drunkenly walk home from the bar than it is to drive and put other people's lives at risk. Anyway, to close out, our rural communities are just as important to our country and society as urban places are. So, when it comes to urban planning of these places, they also deserve to have beautiful and sustainable communities with transit, just as a much larger metro area has too. It's just that everyone keeps making excuses that cars are fine, there's nothing wrong, and the state DOT standards and zoning codes are not a problem. But there is a lot wrong. But the first step to fixing it is acknowledging that there's a problem and then understanding that better models exist. We have a lot to fix, but I believe in us. Thanks for watching. I plan on doing more videos on a rural setting in the future, so subscribe if you'd like to see those when they come out. Also, thanks to my Patreons for keeping these videos coming out on time by helping me do this as a full-time job now.